Hello, welcome to Made by J&D. This is my shed door. I'm doing this video, I've done quite a few others already, but I haven't gotten too much into detail about how I designed it. Um, what I'd like to talk about here are the advantages and disadvantages, and there are about an equal number of both. This, one of the advantages I found is this is something I could build quite easily. I didn't need to purchase special roller door or any any special thing. I just had to be able to use, a, in this case, a welder for this frame. The door behind me is made of wood, and that was just nails and screws. Um, but other than that, it's just a very basic frame. Corrugated iron here keeps it rigid so it doesn't flop around, doesn't move too much. Pretty good security, too. Um, disadvantages. Uh, it needs some headroom on the outside. It needs a counterweight. It doesn't shut itself automatically, and that the last little bit before the door shuts, uh, I have to do that manually by a handle on the inside, and then I latch it manually. I think somebody who's clever with automation could probably make that, you know, automatic, so it would shut, and then something would pull it shut and latch. I didn't need to bother with that here. This is good enough. But the big advantage for me in that, I sometimes have something stacked right outside the door, or some, you know, something I don't want to move. This door here doesn't take a lot of space. You can have something quite close to the outside of this door and it'll still open. But you need some space. Now if I had a roller door, for example, a roller door could have something right up to the door and it would open up. Trouble is a roller door has a pretty big roll when it's shut, or sorry, when it's open. And you need some head space in the shed for that. Well I happen to have probably just about enough, but I think it would limit my headroom. Uh, in this case, this door here will open all the way up, and I'm only losing about this much headroom from the header plate that's up there. So that gives me the most amount of headroom I could. Another advantage from a, say, a sliding door. A sliding door, you couldn't stack anything against the walls on either side, or one side or the other. But you, you couldn't stack things there. And also, if I had a sliding door this wide, and that side was blocked, well, the sliding door would have to be either multi-panels, or it would just block something out that way when it was open. Um, swinging doors. Swinging doors are probably the worst. You need, you need a lot of room in front, to the sides. Uh, maybe if you do it on the inside, you could have something fancy I've seen where they're on tracks. But again, you can't, either you have to have hollow walls or uh, you can't stack anything against the walls. So for me, the best combination was I have all the wall space available. Uh, I do lose some you know, I need to have some space on the outside of the door for the thing to retract up into. But all of my ceiling space is free. And that was the best combination for me. So the door itself, the structure, it's rectangular tubing, rectangular hollow tubing. This is some you can see here. This is the same as that, it's just welded on. That's 40 millimeters by 25 millimeters. And the way I was able to maintain head height but keep my wedge is the actual roller is right here and that's rolling in this track but I had to go inside by about the center of that wheel is 80 millimeters it might wind up a little bit different in your design but by doing that I was able to maintain good head height had I just put this wheel down at the bottom of this frame um, I couldn't be able to close it and let me show you why. I'll just continue it down. You can see here, this is why I've had to inset that. I made a measurement earlier from the middle of this to the inside edge of this. That's only 80 millimeters, but you have to really take into account where the outside of the door is. And from this point to the outside edge of the door is 115 millimeters. That's how it all lines up. I've shown this on earlier videos, but these are just standard door hinges. I welded some and I'd screwed them together because that was the only way I could really put assemble the door. I did everything by myself. I didn't have any help. So I had to design this and put it, this together with that aspect in mind. This bracket here and this bracket here that you can see are the bottoms of the arms that hold this upper panel to the top. There's the other side of the brackets that I just pointed out. 
And these are the two arms that hold the upper panel to the hinges up there. You can see the pitch of the roof. I would have made these pivot points as high as possible because that makes your door as strong as possible for wind loadage and everything else. I only had this amount of space available. And because I have a steel beam on the inside, the structure of the door frame is 90 millimeter squared tubing pretty heavy wall because this is a high windy area and that was the uh, design requirements for the building of the shed in the first place. But you can see a bolt there that's to the middle of the beam on the inside that's holding the roof and that one there the bolts actually up above and that's still the middle of the beam but it drops the hinge to be level. They're both level with each other. Now well, that's my counterweight. You can see some steel plates on top and plus a bucket full of lead. It's just a gallon paint can that I've melted lead into. The door, uh, the way I weighed it was I had it all the way open manually and then I uh, had a stick holding it up and the stick was resting onto a, a scale and the door actually weighs at the bottom edge of that door it's 35 kilograms of weight and that's about what this bucket weighs. It was a little bit low so and then there's some friction because of the cables and the pulleys but uh, all that weight there is about 37 kilograms and that's what it needed to counterbalance the door. Uh, that's unfortunately one of the disadvantages of this door design is you need a counterweight. But it does make the door very easy to open. So the most important design element is your wedge from here to there. This is nice and even. The best support you can have. The worst thing you can have is that this panel is too short. This will be straight. And this will want to just tilt over and it'll jam. Anyways, I'm measuring from that hinge pin there. That's the center of that pivot, the upper pivot. Over here on the middle of the door is another pivot. And the actual pivot point is the wheels on the inside track there. But I'm going to measure to here because this is what makes your wedge. This is when you design it. This is how you're coming up with your wedge. This is roughly equal. It's not perfect. A perfect door probably would be equal. That's 1,230 millimeters. That's 1,240 millimeters. So I'm off by about 10 mil in the, the distance from here to there and here to there. Still, it's good enough that this is a really strong wedge. And that's the most important design element here. thing is uh, if this didn't have a roof above it you'd need to worry about rain getting in and such anyway that's why that says a drip rail right here the drip rail you could probably do without it and um, but you know uh, it, it made a nice finish to this corrugated iron right here and then I used flashing on the outside edge to keep the wind out as best I could it's nowhere near airtight, but it's good enough. Okay, I know this camera I'm using isn't good enough. I've drawn all the dimensions for the door. And, and I'll put those in the description down below the, the video. Uh, just run through them here. The bottom of the header plate is 2310 millimeters. Floor to, the, floor to the bottom of that beam. The width of this door 
is uh, 2740 millimeters from the floor to the upper pivot point the top hinge 2700 millimeters the bottom panel is 1480 millimeters the top panel not to the hinge just the top panel to fill the rest of the door that was 830 millimeters okay but the top panel from the upper pivot point to the middle of the door the center pivot point that is 1220 millimeters now if you had both pivot points the top pivot point and the bottom pivot point outside the wall those should be roughly equal but in my case they're not my bottom pivot point is on the inside of the door where the upper pivot point is on the outside wall actually further out even a little bit more than the, the surface of the wall so that's why those measurements don't really add up too much and then the final confusing measurement is the upper panel with the arms and everything top pivot point to the middle pivot point like I said before was 1220 millimeters the middle pivot point to the bottom wheels is 1360 millimeters and that's not quite well I would think that would should be uh, it should be able to subtract the thickness of the wall and make that equal but it's not it, it still winds up off okay so again you have to work through all the measurements that you've got and the focus is the wedge you need to adjust everything that you can to make the wedge equal to have a strong support hope you've enjoyed this um, good luck